Welcome to a very special edition of the BCSN Sports Wrap. My name is Brian Fulford, and joining us today uh, for our very special, what we're calling the HBCU Fantasy Men's Basketball Tournament. That's right. We have taken the best HBCU basketball teams of the 2020 season, the 19, 2019, 2020 season. And because we're quarantined, just like you who are watching this, hopefully you're quarantined and washing your hands and doing all that great stuff. We have found a lot of time on our hands that we said, you know what? We're without basketball and this would be a great opportunity. What if, what if all of the top HBCU teams were put together in a tournament and given an opportunity to play? And you know what? By guys, that's what we've done. We put them all together. And joining me and joining us on this show, this sports rap show, of course, you see AD Drew right there. AD, say what's up to the people who are watching. What's up, people who are watching? And also joining us, part of our selection committee, uh, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Doc, how we doing? I'm doing really well. Good to be with y'all. All right. And, uh, you know, Doc's coming in, providing us that uh, when when AD and I have been spending our, our many, uh, many a night bouncing names and teams off the wall, we brought in Doc to give us that sound logic and, uh, you know, helped us out tremendously in this process. And, of course, give a shout out to our producer extraordinaire, Roy Evans, who, uh, you know, the magic of what you see right now is a big credit to him. So, again, just to let you all know, Okay, we understand that in a real world scenario, when we're free, no quarantine in our life, we understand that our HBCU basketball teams are playing in three divisions, the Division One, Division Two, and NAIA. Many of these teams did not get an opportunity to play in their tournaments. Many of them didn't even get a chance to finish their conference tournaments. So what better way we could think of is to, you know what, put them all together. Let's try to come up with a formula for seeding them, ranking them, and then let's find some places where they might fictitiously play. Let's find some cool region names. And uh, you know what? Let's make a tournament out of this. And that's what we've done. So um, we hope that you uh, that you will follow along with this presentation. And what's also important to note here is that we're not doing any simulations here. There, we didn't run 50,000 simulated games between <laughs> You know, I tried to get them to do that. Doc tried to get us to do it. I didn't have enough computer uh, bandwidth. bandwidth. Didn't have enough memory on the computer, and I wasn't going to play twenty. Uh, what was I wasn't going to play the video game fifty thousand times either. <laughs> <laughs> so, Got to find some kids, Brian. I, I know we didn't have enough kids to play these fantasy games, so we're leaving it in. This might be even more dangerous here. We're leaving it in the hands of you, the fans. <laughs> we're leaving it up to you, the fans to actually uh, decide which teams are going to be a part of this uh, uh, advancing, you know, from the first round to the second round and so on and so forth. Can and, I say something about that, Brian? Sure, yeah. I just hope this is not like that uh, bracket uh, on the Big Boy Network where they tried to find the greatest college uh, <laughs> basketball player of all time. How does Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, a.k.a. Lou Alcinda, not make it out of the first round? Well, you know, yeah. I, I just hope Even this racket comes out you a little bit better. 
We we might, I hope chance. this comes out and better than that. About, we'll get a chance for those fans to tell us who really has the fan base. That's what this is going to show. Who's Who's <laughs> got a strong fan base? So uh, as this goes along, we're hoping that players and even the actual teams uh, decide to have a little fun with this as well and will promote this out and share it with their uh, with their fans and say, you know, hey, let's make sure we don't get beat by an eight seed in the fan <laughs> voting. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not sure how we can explain that to some bloggers if somehow their team got beat by an eight seed. I, I. I don't know how that would, you know. And and we also want it to be legit. So don't root. Don't pick against somebody. Pick for the best team. You know. Let's be real. Let's let's try to have fun, but let's be as sane so, about so this. So you're as saying. Possible. So you telling Alabama State not to pick against A and M just because it's A and M if they're in the bracket <laughs> or vice versa. Well, is is we'll, we'll have to see whether both of those teams are in. And, I said you know, if they're in the bracket. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm not going to name any fan base or any bloggers out there. Remember, this is fantasy, so this is not real. You know, anything that you see is all fictitious. And thing we're just trying to have a little fun. We're all in a quarantine environment in our homes. But one thing that we did try to do, okay, we did try to because it's very hard. Look, when we have you know, three different divisions. It's very hard to try to put all mm-hmm. of these teams on the same page. But fortunately, uh, what we did do is we went over to uh, MasseyRatings.com and we used their Massey ratings for every team. And that's how we went through and we ranked 1 to 32 in this tournament. So uh, from 1 to 32, we, we took the Massey ratings and we tried to give everybody – uh, a, a rating or at least a place based on that. And the second thing we did is we looked at, we tried to, and I think what's interesting, guys, is most of the teams in this are either right at 500 or above 500 in their overall record. So that's another good thing that I think we could say in this fantasy tournament that we don't have anybody in the tournament who was like, you know, 8 and 20 and then <laughs> somehow – you know, somehow an eight and twenty. You know, somehow an eight and twenty team can go on and win their conference tournament and get into NCAA. That doesn't happen in the BCSN fantasy tournament. No sir, no sir. We don't we don't have anything going on like that. And if that happens, that's because you, the fans, made that happen. It, <laughs> it's not on us. It's you and your voting that could that possi- could possibly create some crazy scenarios like that. Um, so yeah, so. We, we did the rankings via the Massey ratings, and that's how we we came up with our 32 teams. So um, we have four regions, four regions of eight, and we have four very unique locations that they would play. Uh, and then we have a final four, and we got a nice location that these teams would play. So, um, you know, one day when, when all of our HBCUs break away from the NCAA, we've laid out a model for making this thing happen, you know, I'm just saying, you know, some 20, 30 years from now, we the model was here. You saw it right here first. Oh, here first. Right. Got it, got it here first. So, you know, we'll see if we can get a little credit for it. Um, so with that said, gentlemen, are you ready to go through and reveal the four number one seeds in our tournament? Yes, I'm very excited. And now we go to the reveal of our four regions, okay? And these are the regions, uh, as you see, our four regions. We have the Clarence Big House Games region, the John McClendon region, the Ben Job region, and the Jerry Johnson region. Um, in the, uh, AD, you were, you were instrumental in coming up with these names. Um, why the significance of these names for folks who may not know who these uh, gentlemen are? Three of these names, if you're an HBCU basketball person, are pretty much household names. Clarence Big House Games, John McClendon, and Ben Joe. The fourth name, Jerry Johnson, is if you're a small college HBCU basketball is is a pretty big name. Jerry Johnson had 46 years, all of them at Lamont Owen University. He is number two on the all-time win list for HBCU basketball coaches, amassing 821 wins versus 447 losses. 
That's right. Uh, Coach, Coach Johnson uh, won a Division Three championship in 1975 at LeMoyne, won five SIAC championships, also won five volunteer state athletic conference championship when LeMoyne was a Division Three team. Let, let me go over some of the uh, some of the other coaches. Clarence Big House game, the all-time winner, uh, the all-time leader in victories for HBCU basketball coaches, 828 wins versus 447 losses. Uh, he was at two universities. He was at Morgan State and primarily at Winston Salem State, which he's uh, which he's known for. Won NCAA Division II championship in 1967. And won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight CIAA uh, championships. You know, you know, you know. LeBron said, "Not one, not two, not three When he joined the Heat, uh, Big House Game beat him. He got six of them. Six-time Coach of the Year, and uh, he uh, he's a member of the, uh, all of these people are a member of the uh, Basketball Hall of Fame." Uh, next on the win list is uh, Ben Job. Ben Job uh, was was a little bit of everywhere. Five hundred twenty four, three hundred and thirty four was his record. He spent time at Talladega, Alabama State. Well, well, let's just put it real. He did the whole Alabama tour. He did Talladega, <laughs> he did Alabama State, he did Alabama A and M, and he did Tuskegee. Tuskegee, That's right. <laughs> yes. Uh, co- coach at Denver University, and he's most notable for coaching at Southern. He had two stints at Southern uh, University, the Jaguars. Four NCAA appearances, one NIT appearances, five SIAC titles, 11 SWAC championships. And then th- the last one, John McClendon, four, 496 wins, 179 losses. He started off at a place called North Carolina College for Negroes. Help about Doc with which, which school that is. That is now North Carolina Central University. Big time. All right. Basketball program. Yes. Uh, outside of there, Hampton, a place called Tennessee uh, A&I. We know it now as Tennessee State University, Kentucky State, Cleveland State. Uh, eight-time CIAA uh, championship. Uh, coach, coach in professional ranks twice with the Cleveland Pipers and the Denver Rockets, which are now known as the Denver Nuggets. Both of those were ABA teams. But what he's most notable for was the secret game that he that he played against mm. Duke with no with nobody in the gym. Uh, wasn't, wasn't there a documentary at, about that game? Yes, there yeah. was. Yes, yeah, pretty recent. Yes, pretty cool was. if you look at the history uh, in terms of John B. McClendon and I think what I really like that what we did here is with all these coaches, um, some of them may more be household names for various different reasons for our fans that listen here, but now they just got a huge, significant uh, historic and history lesson. So uh, appropriately, I think we did with the regions. There'll be some coaches that could be on the outside looking in on that, and you'd be surprised. We might find a way to honor those coaches as well. Just keep looking. I was going to say, can you can you think of a name or who might be the next or maybe maybe another name that that might when you when you think of black college basketball? I mean, would it would you probably maybe think of players more so than coaches? Uh, there's some legendary coaches when you get down uh, down into it. Some of them are uh, that go further back, so you really have to start looking at it, and then you start looking at the names. Uh, when you look at the history of HBCU programs, people don't realize when we first started these athletic programs, many times the AD slash football coach was also a basketball coach. So you have some of those connections with some of the more legendary basketball coaches that crossed over, coached some basketball, and actually um, won some championships doing that. That <laughs> comes off the top of my head when you think about it like that. And then later you start seeing uh, the platoon where coaches were individually responsible for a program. Um, you look at Texas Southern University with uh, its history, much like North Carolina Central, you have a uh, big time uh, coaches, uh, coach when you want to go back and you talk about, you, you can make some connection there as well. 
I've got one coach uh, who was on the outside looking in. Uh, he's not as well known as his four brothers uh, who all played in the league, and that would be Oliver Jones of Albany State University. He just passed uh, this past winter. Uh, Caldwell, Wilbur, Major, and oh, I'm forgetting one of the brothers. Uh, but but his four younger brothers played in the league. Well, he coached all four of those brothers. Now, at when you Albany say the State. league, when you say the league, you're saying the NBA. Or NBA. The, all okay. four of them played in the NBA. Okay. Some of them may have spent some time in the ABA also, okay. but they all had a run in the NBA, and there was more, all of them had a run more than a cup of coffee. They played okay. all four of them played multiple years in the NBA. They were coached by Oliver Jones at Albany State University. He had a short uh, stint at Tuskegee University, which is where I know him from. But you know that was one person who was on the outside looking in, who uh, you know people should know about. Okay, all yeah, right. If I throw one more in there, it yeah, would yeah, have yeah. To be, as I said, with Texas Southern University, just to give a name, would be Coach Adams. Ed Adams is what everybody calls him more uh, by. His name was Edward H. or Haygood Adams, coached at Texas Southern University, actually played football, as I was telling you, these crossover coaches, played football at Tuskegee University at that time, would have been Tuskegee Institute in 1930. That's uh, what I'm talking played about. Played some football, also in 1936, North Carolina Central, uh, basketball-wise from 1936 to 1937 in North Carolina Central, uh, again, 37 to 49 at Tuskegee. And then he really hit a peak and did some great work at Texas Southern University, really building that program um, before, unfortunately, he lost his life to a heart attack or he probably would have added more accolades. He was assistant football coach uh, under uh, Duke Durley, the legendary Alexander Durley, the coach there at Texas Southern University. But when he had the chance to get on the hard work, hardwood, uh, he got it done. 1949 to 1950, had – five straight championships as they moved from the Midwestern Athletic Conference into the SWAC and still dominated there. And that was not successfully done into most recently uh, when you had Texas Southern University do that again under Coach uh, Davis a couple of years ago. So those are some names when you start talking about some folks, um, uh, what they were able to do in terms of their work, great grass basketball program and minds. And again, you start looking at those connections. North Carolina Central, Texas Southern University, he was there, he did that. We saw that magical game in the 1950s when you talk about the steering committee uh, that John E. McClendon put together with a lot of these legendary coaches about desegregating the NCAA and the NIA, and they first did it with the NIA. These coaches were in the mix doing that, and then just three years ago, you saw where North Carolina Central under Coach Mouton go up against Coach Davis at Texas Southern University and get just a little bit of payback uh, in terms of winning that opening round game there. So somehow Doc was going to work in the uh, Texas <laughs> the Texas Southern shot. You know, shout out shout out to the Tigers, hey, of course. Coach, hey, Coach Doc was going to work that in there. You know it uh, as a professor at Texas Southern University sport management program. They're doing me well. I had to get it in. I got you. I got you. All right. Well, let's find out. We'll we'll, we'll get the close. Uh, we'll find out where uh, Texas Southern is in our bracket. But let's do this. Let's oh, let's reveal the four number one seeds in our uh, fantasy men's basketball tournament. And let's start with the number one overall ranked team, and that's the uh, Prairie View A and M uh, Panthers. Uh, Prairie View A and M finish the. SWAC regular season as the champions uh, for the second consecutive year. They were back-to-back uh, champions. They had an overall record of 19 and 13, a 14 and 4 conference record. Um, they were by far and away the highest-rated Massey rating uh, HBCU team. Our number two overall seed went to there. You see them right there, North Carolina Central. The Eagles, uh, the, uh, you know, funny, the regular season champions of the MEAC finished 18-13. and 13. Uh, The Eagles, of course, winning the MEAC on the last regular season game. Um, I believe they got a chance to play one game in the MEAC tournament before it actually was uh, post well, canceled. 
Correct. so they did happen to get that. So they were they were uh, announced as the tournament champs, uh, and you know if you count that in conjunction with winning the last three uh, conference tournaments, they are the four time MIAC tournament champions. That's all right. Yeah, not bad at all. Uh, now, number our, our our second overall or third overall seed might be a little surprising to some. It's the Southern Jaguars. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'd surprise surprising probably to a lot of people. Uh, Southern, with an overall record of seventeen and fifteen, uh, finished thirteen and five, second overall in the SWAC, and they are probably the hottest team uh, at. At the close of the season, that and that's why it's so disappointing that these guys didn't get a chance to play in a tournament. It's interesting to see what would have happened in the semifinals uh, and possibly the finals. Uh, they they won their last eight games, including uh, one game in the uh, SWAC tournament, but to finish the regular season with a seven-game winning streak, and they basically watched them sort of climb up the poles and. Uh, you know, needless to say, Southern comes in as uh, one of the uh, highest rated teams, actually come in number three overall. And uh, by the fact that they finished number two in the SWAC, it goes to show that they are uh, deserving uh, of their place as a number three overall team. And number four, now obviously this will be uh, debated, but uh, it's it's a, I think it's a good choice. North Carolina A&T, the Aggies, come in as the fourth number one overall seed in our tournament um the the aggies of course losing to north carolina central at the uh, final regular season game but uh, definitely was a great season for the aggies of course a tale of two seasons uh the second half of the season under coach will jones uh they really were an entirely different team from what they were in the first half and a, a really fun team to watch if you had a chance to watch them during the season so uh, there we are, gentlemen. Our four number ones. Uh, let's let's react. What are, what are your thoughts on the four overall number ones? I'll go to AD. What are you, what are your thoughts first? I see two BAC teams, two SWAC teams. Real simple. Uh, a lot of people <laughs> gonna ask, uh, what about the? Uh, <laughs> I guess that's the understatement of the uh, year right there. Um, but they're division where, one where, teams. I guess the, I got well, you what you're, what you're trying to say. The, is, the division, what are the division two teams? What do the NAIA teams uh, fall? Because you've got some second place teams that still achieve number one seeds uh, based on our, our Massey ratings and a, and a few other things. Uh, we know we've got some division two champions out there. We've got an NAIA champion out there uh, that that had ex- they had exceptional seasons on their uh, on their level, but. Right now, they're not a number one seed. Yeah, in terms of, I would think most fans would agree with Prairie View and m North Carolina Central in terms of the number one overall seeds. You may have some people to push back and say North Carolina Central should be number one overall seed, but I think you're hedging your bets. Nobody didn't have that. With Southern being the hottest team out there right now, one of the hottest teams in the country, uh, regardless of HBC or, or divisional rankings, in terms of the number of games they've won in a row. So let's 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 just say we can put those three aside. We get to the fourth seed where you're always on that bubble when you start sliding down. And some people will say, well, maybe you could slide Virginia State up. Uh, the Trojans had an excellent season. They put in a lot of work, finished the regular season championships, made a run in the tournament, didn't get the tournament done. I think they would need to get the tournament to really get themselves a true chance of getting that fourth overall number one seed, which brings us to Miles College out of the SIAC. Mm-hmm. They won the regular season in terms of the division. They got it done in the tournament. So if there's any team that you might push just a little more to say uh, they have an outside shot of saying that they should have got that final number one seed, I think you would have to say it's Miles College Bears. But the reason that I would bounce back at those that would say the Golden Bears are miles is what they did in their uh, non-conference play to begin the season. Um, they weren't uh, really good and outstanding in that play there. Um, and when you look at the CIAA versus the SIC, um, their overall conference ranking and strength of schedule is not as strong as the CIAA. So I think when you put those things together, it becomes harder for them to make that final push to get in that number 
that final number one seed, that fourth spot, if you would, there. But those are the schools I would say correctly, uh, as you brought up earlier, in regards to at least some teams that would have some argument. I'll throw one right, more and, team and in there. Can, oh, go ahead. Yeah, throw your team. Me, I, well, I'll throw one more team in there because it's, I'm going to first, you know, when it comes down to um, RPIs, and, and it's it's very hard when you look at uh, cross divisions, Division One, Division Two, II, Division III, or uh, NAIA. Um, the RPIs in Division Two for Miles and Virginia State were practically similar. And so, you know, granted, when you talk about, you know, and, and you look at their records, uh, obviously Miles had a 24 and six overall record, uh, Virginia State 19 and nine. Um, I would throw another team in that mix. And if you're one of those people like I, who kind of believe the competition level at NAIA is equal to Division Two, I would yeah, say I'm- Xavier <laughs> University, um, who actually has an RPI of uh, 33, they're ranked 10th in NAIA. Uh, they were, I believe, their regular overall, season and conference champion. Yeah, they were 27 and 8 overall. I would think Xavier would be one of those teams that, from just, and again, we use the Massey ratings to sort of rate everybody on an equal playing field mathematically. But if you take that aside and you just kind of went from, I hate to say the eye test, or if you looked at, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, if you looked at eye tests and looked at conference standings and things of that nature, and if you watch these teams play, I could I could easily make a strong argument that Miles and Xavier are probably would 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 be deserving, possibly in somebody's oh. fantasy bracket of a no, of a number one overall seed or not not overall overall but number one seed right behind Central and Prairie View who I think are the top two teams by far and away I think everybody else after them it, it probably opens up you know discussions right uh, I'm gonna lean towards the the CIAA as far as getting the, if somebody was getting the benefit of the doubt on that one line or any line CIAA because of the tradition the CIAA is a basketball conference it's just like the ACC on the big boy level so when people think when with everything else being equal you're going to go for the ACC team everything else being equal when it comes to basketball you're going to go for the CIAA team Keep that in mind uh, as as we go through this. And I'll add one point, AD. When you talk about the CIAA and the history, yeah. Uh, oddly enough, I think they've transitioned over a little more of a basketball league than CIAA. That's the only problem you would have is they're living on that that, that historic nature. So I like the idea if you're going to push a team up from a Division Two NCA or NAI, I would slightly give the edge uh, as you brought out. Uh, Brian, in that, in terms of Xavier, I would give the slight edge over Miles and a CIAA team. In this case, Virginia State. If I had to pick one, I would have to slide up Xavier. Just to just to give you guys some comparison, uh, to just you know further muddy the waters um, when you talk about CIAA versus uh, you know SIAC or anyone else GCAC. Um, there are, in terms of RPIs among the HBCUs within Division Two, among the top six highest RPI rated teams, five of them are CIAA schools. Of course, mm-hmm. like I said, and then there's Miles. It goes back that, to AD. AD, AD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I don't have the numbers in front of me. You do, and it's just, it's just an art. But you know, but you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like Clemson in the ACC. Yeah. Clemson is known for football in a basketball conference. That's what some of these other schools, that's what these schools like yeah. Bowie State, they're, they're doing football in a basketball conference. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, I will tell you, in terms of Massey ratings, um, outside of Prairie View, who sits uh, sort of really about, uh, um, I'd say, a little bit ahead of everyone else, there is not much of a difference between teams two, three, four five and six uh actually seven between the next six schools there is not much of a difference in their massey ratings and of course you know those schools i'm talking about north carolina central southern hampton a t texas southern and tennessee state uh so all of those schools 
are all sort of in that mix. And, and of course, uh, three of those schools, you know, we awarded number one seeds to. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see when we do the bracket reveal um, where those teams uh, fit within our brackets and regions and which, you know, which teams are the two seeds, which teams are the three seeds. Um, so we will we'll reveal those regions in our first region that we'll talk about coming up here after this break. We'll talk about the Clarence Big House Games region uh, and find out who are the seven other teams playing with and, Prairie View A&M. And during where we're going to play those region. games at in our fantasy draft also. Yes, thank you for that, AD. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, do, that, we'll do that as well <laughs> when My we bad. come back. That's all right. You know, just that's all right. I, I'm just handing back over. That. I'm just handing back over to you. Let you swing away. That's all right. All good. All good. Did, did, did I get a bunt single or a home run? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You just took a strike there. That's all right. That's all right. Took a swing. <laughs> when we come back from uh, this break, we'll go in talking about the first region, the Clarence Big House Games region. We'll be back right after this. You're watching the Sports Wrap on the Black College Sports Network. The Creole Seasoning is a sodium-free and sugar-free blend that's versatile enough to put on anything. One of the first blends I developed more than eight years ago, the Creole Seasoning has an unmistakable aroma, a bold flavor, and a little heat for character. Every time I open one of these bottles, I hear trumpets and big band music. <laughs> It's like a loot machine Going around town trying to get down It's like a loot machine The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. It's like a loot machine. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Let's face it, shopping for insurance can be time consuming. That's why when it comes to your auto, home, and life insurance needs, make things simple and trust the experts at Allstate. They will help you get the coverage that fits your needs while helping you bundle your life, home, and auto policies. Bundling saves you money, sure, but it also saves you time so you can enjoy the things that matter most even more. Contact me, Tammy Haynes, your local agent, for a free personalized insurance quote. Allstate, are you in good hands? Majesty is a premium health and wellness tea line focused on bringing delicious yet healthy tea blends to the community. Filled with an abundance of vitamins and antioxidants, we work to blend teas with exotic spices and fruits to produce scrumptious and wholesome beverages. So check us out at MyMajesties.com. That's M-Y-M-A-J-E-S-T-E-A-S. Dot com, My Majesties, an Urban Passport member. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. Them belly full, but we hungry. 
Mango's Caribbean Restaurant. Open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. Oh, we've got a good thing going. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404 404- 698-3992 or log on to mangoes caribbean restaurant.com for instant coupons text m-a-n-g-o-s to 313131 tell your mama hungry papa hungry brother hungry mangoes caribbean restaurant authentic caribbean cuisine open up the door tell your mama hungry all right welcome back to the uh, uh 2020 HBCU Fantasy Men's Basketball Tournament. Brian Fulford, A.D. Drew, Dr. Kenyatta, Cavill here. And uh, let's get into, gentlemen, let's get into the Clarence Big House Games region where our number one overall seed is Prairie View A&M. Our number two seed in this bracket, the Norfolk State Spartans from out of the MEAC representing the number three seed we talked about them a little bit earlier that's the Virginia State Trojans representing the CIAA and then the number four seed also from the CIAA uh, Fayetteville State Broncos now now we have the top four seeds out of the way and just to let you know all of these uh, games in these regions will be played in New Orleans, Louisiana. Okay, um, just by and, and we'll get to we'll talk about the location in just a moment. But um, uh, let me go through the rest of the matchups and set the rest of the seeds here. Um, as we have Fayetteville State now on the board as the four seed, they will take on fifth seeded Jackson State out of the SWAC. Uh, the Tigers enter the uh, tournament here as a five seed in the region. The six seed in the region, the Bowie State Bulldogs. So we already have a CIAA versus CIAA matchup, three versus six. The seven seed, the Talladega Tornadoes taking on Norfolk State. I think that'll be a real interesting contest. Talladega, of course, of the GCAC, uh, Gulf Coast Athletic Conference. And then number eight, also from the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference, you have Dillard University. They'll be taking on, the Dillard Blue Devils will be taking on Prairie View A&M. And all these games would probably be played in New Orleans, Louisiana. I would guesstimate, if I had a choice of where I would play these games, I can think of no finer place in New Orleans, other than maybe the Smoothie King, than the Xavier University Convocation Center, a great facility plenty of space for all of these teams and fans uh so let's go ahead and break down this bracket gentlemen uh what are your initial thoughts when you when you look at these matchups let's go drew what are your thoughts oh we go first i'm gonna start off with this one eight matchup it's it's a one eight on paper you know prairie view coming a couple hours now to roll in texas from texas but play good on their pseudo home court Deal it four miles from where we're proposing to play these games at. Big home crowd advantage to the number eight seed, the Dilla Blue Devil. Also, another team that had a good home advantage would be uh, Jackson State in this uh, in this matchup. You know, Jackson State uh, coming from Jackson, Mississippi. And so that's only a couple hours away, so you would expect a good fan base in this particular game. One other one that would be of note would be Talladega, having just played the conference tournament at this proposed site, could potentially give them an advantage over Norfolk State. They, they played uh, two games in the conference tournament. They played one regular season game. This would be their fourth uh, game in that facility. Just a couple of things to think about for people who would be potentially filling out their brackets. I'll turn it over to Dr. Cavill. Certainly, I think you make great points in regards to uh, who will have the fan base. And But I think Devontae Patterson, Prairie VA&M, SWAC Player of the Year, is going to find a way to really get it done. 
and I think the overall seeding comes into effect with these matchups here. Um, and so when I get through this and I see this region, I see Prairie View coming out of this region, finding a way to get it done in, in terms of just uh, the talent they have. Um, you talk about multiple players, Coach of the Year, Byron Smith, is going to have his team really focused to play in this game. And they're going to have the eyes to get out in this region so they can find a way to get into uh, that last four teams, if you would, into the matchup. And you talk about uh, the top team players coming out of Prairie View. Uh, as we talk about Devontae Patterson, uh, he has a chance to play on the next level to just let you know how talented he is. Uh, first team of two years in a row. Uh, who are also going to have Gerald Andrus that has that old man game. He kills it with the mid range. I love to watch him play. Uh, how he uh, finds his spot on the floor. And he isn't the person that uh, will make you think that he's just going to give you all those buckets, but he finds a way night after night to give you about, you know, anywhere from 16 to 22 buckets. And I think although Dillard is going to have a great uh, run there, uh, offensively you'd like to see Dillard to try to push up the tempo uh, with 85 points a game. Then, but on defense, they give up 81 points a game, and that's going to play right in to Prairie View and m which is a very good defensive play, only allowing teams about 66 points a game. So that's another reason why I say in that matchup, I think Prairie View finds a way to get it done, and they push away. But on to that match matchup, Jackson State, and when you talk about Fayetteville State, this one's interesting to me. Jackson State is a team that kind of plays up and down in terms of their competition. Uh, they are very solid on defensive side of the ball with 67, but the problem is that at times they'll struggle. They'll go on scoring droughts, and they can't get points. And that's why I say Fayetteville State, uh, this is my first upset of the tournament. Wow. First round game at 4-5. and five, A lot of people, the way it matches up, is not really an upset. For most people, though, people think Jackson State is going to find a way to sneak through there. Even though they have a little bit of their fan base, I think they're going to find themselves in trouble. Because Fayetteville is going to find a way to put up points. They're pretty solid on defense as well. Only giving up right under 66 points a game. 65.8 to be uh, exact to let you know. When you put that push on them, I think you're going to find our first upset uh, in people's minds. Even though it's a 4 over 5 and you know how those games go. They often know a push. I think Fayetteville State is going to find a way to get it done. You slide on down as that next matchup when you talk about the CIAA. These teams will be familiar with each other. I think Fayetteville State finds, I mean, Virginia State finds a way to get it done, and they defeat Bowie State. Um, they continue to do what they do on the offensive side of the ball. They'll put the points up, 80 points a game. Uh, Bowie State is uh, not very strong on the defensive side, 73 points a game, and they give it up. So I think that's going to be the rub, and you're going to see the number three seed come out of uh, there in New Orleans. And Norfolk State uh, over Talladega. Talladega. Is used to playing that arena. They're going to have a good fan base because they're used to coming down there. They love to come to New Orleans, as you would say. But Norfolk State is just too strong on the defensive side of the ball for Talladega. Uh, they're going to hold them down, even though they like to run, put up 81 points. You're going to see Norfolk State slow the tempo down in that game and get it in a game that they like. And they're going to like the big men find a way to get it done in a lot of ways uh, when you talk about the talent of Norfolk State. Very talented team in a lot of ways. So I see Norfolk State, that two seed, finding a way to get it done uh, as they kind of continue to push uh, the way around it. And when you talk about Norfolk State, uh, head coach Robert Jones, he was the MEAC coach of the year, uh, deserved it in many ways. He's going to solid. And he's a really good coach. Uh, not to say that any of these coaches that are in this tournament can't find a way to coach it up on the X and O's, but I think Coach Jones, Robert Jones for Norfolk State, is going to push that magic. But I really like this next round game. You have that regional matchup that everybody loves with a Norfolk State versus Virginia State. And guess what? This is where my second upset of this region takes place, where Virginia State finding a way to take down Norfolk State after that second matchup. I just think Virginia State is going to be really fired up for this game. Norfolk State is going to be fired up as well. But something tells me Virginia State is going to edge them out. That's my second upset of this region. Um, for Prairie View, as I said, didn't give away any secrets. I think it'll play out. They'll beat Fayetteville State. They'll beat them pretty handily. And they're going to find a way with that matchup against the number three 
team out of this region, Virginia State, and Prairie View finds a way to get it on down, and they find their way into that uh, final four teams of this uh, BCSN Fantasy Basketball Tournament. And Prairie View comes out of the region. Clarence Big House game would be proud of the Prairie View Panthers, the way they do it on the defensive side of the ball. If, if I could jump in and add before you before you come in, A.B., I think the interesting matchup for me, uh, looking at that 3-6 matchup between Bowie and Fayetteville State, um, or excuse me, Bowie and Virginia State, where these teams obviously have played each other. And just to give you a little bit of history, uh, the first meeting was at Bowie State that um, uh, Bowie won. 86 to 81. The second time Virginia State won that contest, 89 to 66 at home. So this will be the rubber match. Um, so yeah, I, I do think if Virginia State's able to win that game, and it does set up for them to play Norfolk State. And and I was just looking at the schedule. You know, they did not pull. And really, that's one of the things that is sort of disappointing that there is no advantage for Division II basketball teams. There's no advantage for them to play Norfolk State, you know, because of the way the NCAA is set up and the region rankings. You actually, you don't get credit when you play uh, a Division I team. So those games that, you know, that was probably a natural rival back in the day, Norfolk State and Virginia State. Um, and like you said, Doc, that would be a big game, and it would possibly be a big upset in a lot of people's eyes for Virginia State to beat Norfolk State. Um, but I'm, I'm curious, you know, how far a team like Fayetteville State could go. But if Jackson State does end up playing Prairie View, you got a SWAC rematch again. What's the what's the history there between Prairie View and Jackson State? Could Jackson State be good enough to pull off the upset if those two teams were to meet? Certainly, I think so. When you talk about the first two matches, Prairie View got both of them. They got them pretty handily when they went down to uh, Jackson uh, for the first part of their game, and they took it to Jackson State. Uh, the rematch was much closer game. Uh, Prairie View has the ability to really uh, play a style. Uh, that frustrates you on the defensive team. You think you're in the game, and they'll muscle you around, and by the end of the game, you're losing by five, six, seven, sometimes nine, 10, 11 points. Uh, but that's also the matchup, uh, unfortunately, that many people would uh, remember is that's when you had a little dust up at the end of the game between Jack and ah, yes. Curve. You. So you still have yeah. a lot of sore feelings on that matchup. Um, this hard is to beat somebody up. three times, too. That, that, yeah, that would factor hard. in there, too three times, um, and you will see in this matchup possibly coming in uh, to play during the tournament. This would be the semi semifinal matchup as both teams won the quarterfinals at their home campus, Prairie View defeating uh, Alabama A&M and Jackson State defeating Alcorn State for the third time, and so they were going to match up in that one versus four in the SWAC tournament in Birmingham that was not to be, as we all know, while on the other side you had Texas Southern and Southern playing out. So it looks like because of this tournament, one way or the other, it seems like people are going to try to get that game. I call it, but you can see Jackson State beating Fayetteville State. Um, that's not out of the realm of expectation. So in that uh, next round, Sweet 16, if you want to call it, uh, I could easily see a Prairie View A&M Jackson State. I still would have Jackson uh, Prairie View over Jackson State. Let me clear, clearly state that I still see Prairie View over Jackson State. I think it would be a close matchup in the first half, but I think Prairie View just has too much again with Devontae Patterson. He's going to be looking once he gets on the basketball court and he wants to get a championship, whether it's the SWAC tournament, NCAA opening round game, or in our uh, black uh, BCSN fantasy tournament in terms of the men's side. I still think Prairie View finds a way to get it done. And they come out of his reach. Drew, what about you? Now, you you are a big CIAA uh, uh, advocate. We got three CIAA teams in this bracket. I don't know who put this bracket together, but uh, what are your <laughs> thoughts? <laughs> you, what are your thoughts, and how do you see this? Who who who's who's your team most likely to come out of this region, and where do you see an upset if there is one? 
I see Prairie View at Norfolk in the in the regional finals. Uh, I see a very good Virginia State team. Don't know if they quite have what it's going to take to be a Norfolk State University, but Norfolk has to get past Talladega. Talladega scores early. Talladega scores off. Talladega scores in bunches. If you sleep on Talladega, they will be up 10, 12, 15 points on it on Norfolk State. The question is, Talladega doesn't play the best defense, but they will outscore you. Can Talladega get up enough, and does Norfolk State get down enough or have one of those cold nights where they pull off the upset? So if I see an upset in this bracket, it's going to be in the first round. It's going to be Dega. Dega has played on that court multiple times. They're used to their court. They're used to that city. So that would be the potential matchup that uh, I see an upset in. If not, Norfolk State makes it to the regional finals where I got. I have to go chalk. Prairie View will uh, come out of that, even if Norfolk makes it to the regional finals. Great analysis, guys. And, and now, you know, as we've analyzed it and, and upset a few people, I'm sure this is where now the fans get a chance to decide because, remember, you will get a chance to go in and vote for the winners of these brackets. And just let me explain how this is going to work, how our bracket is, uh, how our bracket and how the voting is going to work. You're going to have over a two-day period to vote for each game, each winner, Okay, now you have a chance to vote one time a day. So over beginning Monday, beginning today, going into Wednesday at noon is when the cutoff will be for voting in the first round. So you'll get a chance, you know, you can vote one time Monday, uh, one time in, in the first 24 hours, and then another time in the second 24 hours uh, to vote. And so based on the voting, that's who, you know, will will determine who advances to the second round. So, again, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of fan voting. But more importantly, we're hoping that the basketball heads out there uh, who pay attention to basketball really break down the matchups and do your own homework and try to figure out who would win this contest. Um, and so after the first round, then we'll have another two days of voting for the Sweet 16 teams. Um, and then another two days of voting will get down to the Elite Eight. And then going into the next weekend, we will have our final four. And we'll actually do a final four show, kind of talk about how we got to the final four, how the voting went, any surprises that popped up over the course of the week. And then after the final four takes place over a couple of days, that voting is done. We get to our championship and we will crown a fantasy national champion. Fantasy, keyword, not real. Fantasy, okay? <laughs> Just but wouldn't it be nice to have this happen real? <laughs> we, we understand that. We've set the template. But again, you got to tell it to some people, this is fantasy. Okay, so let's have fun with this and let's engage in some conversation as we go along the way. Uh, let's move over to our next region. Now, the winner of the Clarence Big House Games region will take on the winner of the Jerry Johnson region in the Final Four, okay? And so this region takes place in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, a couple of different sites. Any thoughts on where this game might be played? What's the best spot to have this game? A.D., uh, uh, Dr. Cavill, where, where, where do you see this uh, game this region games being played if you had a pick of somewhere uh, jumping in here I think you go to one of those uh, campuses uh, and you can't necessarily have North Carolina hosting the tournament having at their place so uh, if I had to guess and, and go like that then I'd say let's take it over uh, to North Carolina Central's home campus uh, and, and and go from there so um in uh let's go let's go ad any thoughts before we re do the reveal here in this region no i i i kind of agree with him you know i don't like it being in bojangles coliseum or the spectrum center mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like those bigger i don't like those big arenas for our hbcu basketball i like the more intimate setting where with the band where you can hear the band the band takes up a 
half aside and and then the other half the other half is taken up by the other band and you get the contest uh going with each other you know uh, especially well, when you got new society especially when you have teams with, with uh that that'll be traveling with neutral sites you like smaller venues three four five thousand seat venues. not not a thirty not a twenty thousand seat venue well, what about the, uh, now I don't know what the name of the stadium is that the University of Charlotte plays in, but isn't that one of the, is that where uh, one of those arenas, um, you know, or where does the University of Charlotte, I mean, other only HBC, well, in Charlotte, what, you have Johnson C. Smith there in Charlotte, obviously, um, you know, I, I'm not really sure about the seating capacity of their, of their arena, uh, but that's the one that pops into my head immediately. Um, yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna keep it in Charlotte, you're right, and you want to keep it at HBC. You're gonna go over to John C. C. Smith. Um, you, it certainly has enough capacity in there to have uh, have a home tight uh, configuration in terms of getting people in there. But you could go over to Charlotte. They have a uh, nice facility over there, certainly um, that you can play some good basketball in. Okay, you know, Bojangles Arena, which is the smaller of the two arenas where they hold the CIAA, seats about eighty five hundred. So that oh. would be a little bit. That would be a little bigger than I would like to see, but it's it's still doable, especially uh, with the uh, with the North Carolina teams being the number one seed in this particular tournament. Well, you got to you got to think here, AD. If uh, if uh, now obviously the NCAA is not running this, but if they were. You know, or some other entity or group. I mean, sure, you want to get as many people in the seats as you can. Eighty, eighty-five hundred is not bad. That sounds like a nice, intimate setting for uh, eight basketball teams, especially on the first day. I mean, come on now. Yeah, especially especially when you've got. Uh, once again, we've got. You've got to generate some revenue here. Twenty-five bucks a seat now. Come on, AD. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and you've got just, A&T uh, you got A&T T is number one seed we didn't so. work out specific with the financial makeup of the tournament Right, right. We didn't, we didn't go that far. So fantasy here. We didn't we didn't go we're doing fantasy fantasy finances here. All right, let's get into the reveal. So let's we get just into the reveal. Doing bitcoins for the money. No, god, no. come on now. Uh, all right, I, well, we want to see cash money, credit receipts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number one overall uh, in this region, uh, the number one seed, actually the fourth number one in the tournament, North Carolina A&T Aggies. They are the one seed in this one. The two seed, there they are, Doc, Texas Southern. The Tigers come in as the number two seed in this region. We know that's where Doc will be, um, you know, taking we ask, on. We ask that you hold your applause to the end, Dr. Cabello. <laughs> The three seed in I this. Here. Uh, the three seed in this. How about this? Johnson C. Smith. I, the guys who did this. I don't know who did the bracketing for this. These guys are crazy. They came up with Johnson C. Smith. <laughs> Johnson C. Smith in Charlotte. I mean, talk about a home. Uh, the three seed. Talk about a home court advantage. Um, and and in the four seed, we got Bethune Cookman. The Bethune Cookman Wildcats come in as the uh, number four seed in this tournament. Uh, okay, so now we get into the matchups. We got Bethune Cookman taking on the fifth seeded West Virginia State. Uh, the uh, West Virginia State Yellow Jackets with an overall record of 19 and 10, uh, 13 and 9 over in their conference. Of course, West Virginia State in Division II uh, lost in their conference semifinals. Six seed, or excuse me, yeah, six seed. This one might shock a few people. Harris Stowe, uh, the Harris Stowe Yellow, is it the Yellow Jackets, A.D.? Yes, it is. Hel That's Harris Stowe State University, St. Louis, Missouri. Right from A.D.'s hometown of St. Louis. Uh, they're actually conference champions, ranked 24th in NAIA. Um, that will be an interesting matchup, taking on Johnson C. Smith, to say the least. Uh, then we have a seven C. Now, it might be might be a little controversial for some people when they see it, but it's Clark Atlanta, and Clark Atlanta actually comes in with a record of thirteen and fifteen overall. But more impressively, impressively in my opinion, is they finish first in the uh, SIAC East Division with an overall record of thirteen and seven. So uh, might not have had a great non 
non-conference schedule or a non-conference record, but definitely by the second half of the season when the conference, when it mattered, they put together an impressive resume and actually are, are pretty well rated ahead of uh, some other Division II teams in our tournament. They are the seventh seed. And then our eighth seed, uh, Voorhees College. Voorhees in the NAIA uh, Division II uh, level, but Voorhees with a record of 19-9, and nine, uh, come in with a very good record, a 7-1 and one record versus HBCUs that they played this year and so um they're actually one of the you know if we had to rate among the top 32 Voorhees came in right about number 31 or so uh but definitely we couldn't leave these guys out of the uh tournament field so there's our there's our tournament field uh this time I guess I'll start with you Dr. Cavill I'll let you go I'll let you go first and kind of uh break down the uh, opening round matchups certainly let me start uh, with the two seed, Texas Southern University. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, and that might be a little hint of something that's going to happen in this region for me, this Jerry Johnson region. They take on Clark Atlanta, uh, the seven seed. Clark Atlanta out of the SIAC. Uh, people may not realize they were second in the SIAC on the defensive side of the ball, holding teams up just under 65 points a game. And this is a SIAC conference that likes to put the ball in the hole. They all scored around 70-some points a game, about uh, nine out of the ten teams there in that uh, SIAC conference uh, like to put up points. But they were able to get it done on the defensive side. Uh, but on offense, they scored 71 points. Uh, putting themselves right in position for Texas Southern University. And this is one of those games uh, that could give Texas Southern the Tigers some trouble. Texas Southern has struggled on the defensive side of the ball all season long. Uh, they were down near the bottom of the conference, 7th, 8th position, if you would, in terms of what they did on the defensive side of the ball, giving up 76 points of the game. But they started playing a much better defense near the end of the season, particularly in that tournament, their first quarter final, quarter. Uh, final matchup, and they looked like a team that was coming together, uh, and it seemed like they finally got it after all the season, and even though they sl uh, uh, slept a bit, if you would, in terms of coming out of that last final weekend where they lost two games on the road uh, to Alcorn State and Southern, as Southern was playing really good basketball. Offensively, uh, Texas Southern, the Tigers put up 73 points, so at the end of the day, I think they found a way to get it done and pulled away late in that matchup in that game as the Tigers come out of there into that Sweet 16. Uh, moving to the number one team uh, uh, seated in this division, North Carolina a &T, taking on Voorhees. Voorhees likes to put up the offensive ball. They put up 83 points a game, almost 80, almost 84 points a game at 83.5. Defensively, uh, they will give up some points, 77 points a game. So I think defensively, the Aggies are just too much, too much power, too strength. They'll slow the ball slow the ball down, slow the game down so they can find a way to get it done. This is a team that puts up 72 points but gives up 72 points, so they play a lot of close games, so they're used to that. But a t comes out of that matchup against Voorhees. Then the 4-5 matchup, Bethune-Cookman against West Virginia State. I went back and forth, had West Virginia State uh, Yellow Jackets coming out of this game for a while. Then I went back to the Wildcats and had the Wildcats coming up for the game. Uh, Wildcats, 75 points a game, defensively giving up 72. They played up and down all season, but it went on a nice stretch at the end of the season uh, to get to that fourth spot, if you would, in terms of the MEAC tournament. And that was because FAMU was not eligible. Uh, but West Virginia, offensively, they can put up the shoot the rock, 86 points a game. But defensively, they give up 80 points. So, I think um, I'm going to have to pull back. I started the edge in West Virginia State, but I just can't pull the trigger. I can't get it done. I'm going to give it to the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. So we'll have a rematch set up, if you would, in terms of that Sweet 16 matchup against the Aggies. This is my upset in this bracket. I have Harris Stowe defeating Johnson C. Smith. Yes, I know it's in Charlotte. At home, wow. I don't wow. see thing. But I think Harris Stowe, being able to give 80 points and put it on the board. I think they're going to find a way to speed up this game. Johnson Smith has shown that they are allow a team to speed them up. They'll turn the ball over uh, as they do defensively. They give up 71 points, so I don't think they'll find a way 
um, Harris Stowe to push this game, and I think they'll get that upset. Digging a little further in the tournament, I think you get uh, coming into that elite matchup. I think you have North Carolina A&T. They find a way to defeat Bethune Cookman, and they face up against Texas Southern Tigers. And this is my first late round upset of the tournament. The Tigers get it done. They defeat North Carolina A&T, and they find themselves in Atlanta. Two SWAT teams thus far, uh, I see getting it to Atlanta. Wow. Mm, a, a, not surprised there. AD, what are your what are your thoughts? Uh, well, since uh, Dr. Hey, Bill you wants to start like that and laugh at me, man. <laughs> since Dr. Bill wants to start with uh, the, a team that's near and dear to his heart, I'm going to start with a team that's near and dear to my heart. That being Harris Stowe. You know, uh, Harris Stowe, number, number 24 rank, won, won their conference. Question is, do they have anybody, Johnson C. Smith has anybody who can stop Deshaun Munson. Uh, Deshaun Munson is a junior out of East St. Louis, uh, Illinois. Seven triple doubles on the season. Like that's gonna, that's, going to be tough for Johnson C. Smith to uh, figure out. Despite the fact, and they have the distraction of being at home. It's a home court advantage, but it's a distraction. A distraction. So, I love that. I love that analysis. Yeah, yeah. A distraction. Hey, hey, I'm breaking this down just like they was playing you're, on the you're court. Home, you're home in the tournament. That's a distraction. Okay. I'm with JD. Go ahead. Well, you got all the people asking you for tickets that you can give out. You got your bed. You know everybody can buy you a drink at the club. Hair soap. Uh, in that one. Uh, now, the, now, the one thing to keep in mind, Dr. Cavill, is who is the coach for Clark Atlanta University? Who is, is Coach? Oh, yes. George, uh, George, yeah, George, out, George Lynch, coming who's North coming Carolina. back home to North Carolina. He's going to have like he's gonna have a big fan base. Watch <laughs> out, Texas Southern. Watch <laughs> out, Texas Southern. George Lynch is coming back home, but I think I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be bittersweet though. I just want to bring that out. To you. <laughs> Let's go to the top half of the bracket. Hold on a second, uh, Ab. You, you glossed over the fact that Mr. Munson of Harris Stowe is a is a first team uh, All American. I mean, that's how that's yeah, how yeah. Uh, 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 that's yeah, the, the, the of, triple double the seven triple doubles was was my stand of the, of the day with him. But I yes, you are you. correct. For and. Uh, he was all defensive team in uh, in their conference also. Right, right. All right, go ahead. Top half of the bracket. Okay, top half, top half of the bracket. Let's start off with A and T, who's who is a pseudo home game for them. But Voorhees is not too far away, so that's going to be a good. Uh, that's going to be a good crowd in that game. You know, uh, not, not sure about Voorhees band, but I have seen A and T's band, so <laughs> we know what we, we know. What the bands are going to do. Uh, I've got I'm, I'm going with an upset in this one. West Virginia State, even though they did not have the best season, they play in a tough, tough conference. Uh, I, I I just got a gut feeling West Virginia State would be would be Bethune, which is going to leave me with A uh, and T and Bethune. Me act. Well, look, it's a neutral site. This, this is the thing. This is the thing you got to consider. It's a neutral site game. Um, but it's funny. Both teams have been good at home, you know. So yeah. this is a neutral site that you got to factor in. Nobody's got a home court advantage, except really A and T because they're in Charlotte. Yes, yeah, I mean that 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 close. But hey. What what fun is it to fill out a bracket if you don't pick that one team that <laughs> you're gonna that you're gonna ride with? Because either, either you either you win your bracket or you bust your bracket by picking that one team that you need no, to you're that not. you need to pick right. No, you're not. I, 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 I know as a rattler, you hate to hear this come out my mouth, but I no, but, you're not. Hey, if I if Bethune, go ahead. I'm sorry. Bethune, go ahead. Which, which one? Which one does a rat does not like worse? And I know I just use double negative, but which one does? Which one does a rat go with? That's why you root I'm for A and T. That's why you pick A and T. 
except for the fact a and is going to the Big South. No, I'm staying with Black Coffee. <laughs> I'm picking but. That's that that right there just topped everything right there. That that that's the kind of next level analysis that you get when we're talking about a fantasy men's basketball tournament right there. Ad, that you just that, that was next level. Continue on, please. But, but to okay, Anthony's, to Anthony's credit, but Don Cookman does have the defensive player of the year for the MIAC in Latrell Pope. So um, yes, you can make the argument. That Bethune Cookman can find a way to get it done over North Carolina AT. And as I said, going down the stretch, North Carolina AT was solid. The first part of the year, they were really running over everybody. And but you started seeing them lose just a little something. I don't know they if they came were back to the pack. Legs. They came back to the pack. I don't know if they were getting tired of legs or the motivation wasn't quite there after the announcement was made. Maybe there was some shock in terms of that. But I can see Bethune Cookman find a way to get it done over North Carolina A T. So Anthony, I'm not gonna push back at that one. All right. Uh we got we got Harris Stowe, Texas Southern on the bottom half. Uh Texas Southern, Bethune in the finals. And Doc, I I I I'm gonna give it to you. Yeah, I am gonna let you have your Texas Southern in the uh final four. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> wow, you guys, <laughs> you guys are something, man. I tell you, I, I think you guys, I think you guys are are sleeping on North Carolina A and T. Uh, um, the Aggies, I, you know, I heard you mention there they they are two different teams, and a large for a large reason for that, Coach Will Jones. That team became an up tempo team once they made the transition in in coaching, and you've seen that. And I'm gonna tell you for A and T. Um, one of the names that you got to remember, a uh, young man by the name of Cameron Langley. Uh, not only did he lead the nation in total assists, but he uh, tied for assists per game with eight. Uh, he's the MEAC all-time leader in assists. Uh, they, they, that team, I'll tell you, as, as fun as that game was against North Carolina Central, I think obviously they ended that game and ended the conference where I think that game came down to whoever was at home. If that game had been played at Corbett or Club Corbett, as they called it, where I think I believe they have a 25-game home conference uh, streak going, A&T would have won the MEAC. So I, I just think, you know, you talked about tempo, and if A&T and, and Bethune were to get a shot at playing one another, uh, I think A&T has the horses to, to possibly beat Bethune Cookman, and and again, I just I'm not going to root for you know Bethune Cookman if it came down to it, you know, as, as a biased rattler. I'm sorry, I, that's just not how I, not how I roll. All respect to Bethune Cookman. I love the I love everything they're doing over there. It's a great program. They're a lot of success. Despite the fact, despite the fact you live in Florida, right? Despite let's, the let's fact that I live in some, Florida, let's get some of these numbers out of here. So people can at least understand where we're where we're going here. So Anthony, I think you make some points. Early in the season, Bethune Cookman and AT, they split. They were one of the few teams that did play the back and forth head to head matchups. In both of those games, the both of those games were close. So let's not mm-hmm. ignore the fact that these teams are not that far away from each other. Bethune And the home team won each game. Home team won each game, right? That's right. Um Actually, they went on the road. They actually lost on the road. Uh, uh, A and T with Holston Bethune Cookman. Uh, they won that game, ninety eight to nine, ninety eight to ninety five. Uh, a and T got that done, as you said, at home. And then they went on the road and they lost seventy eight to seventy three. So you're talking about teams uh, that are neck and neck with each other. There's not a lot of space in the difference of the conference where they. Uh, failed in terms of that matchup, but so I think you can still make that argument that Bethune Cookman does have a legitimate chance of upsetting uh, the number one seed out of this region. I had A T, but I'm saying it was back and forth, just a slight of bit, a slight of hand. But regardless, Texas Southern is going to come out to go to Atlanta. <laughs> I, 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 I got a A&T question for you. The Bethune Cookman Wildcats. I, I got a question for you because I, I will agree with one thing. I, I and I don't I don't know and I, how my, how my how I vote will come down to your answer, Doc. Is this Texas Southern team is this as good of a team as the teams from the last uh, three or four seasons that went to the tournament? 
different, good, different. Though. Okay, I didn't think so. I mean, because you look at the record, it's not the same kind of record. But okay, so with that said, I'm looking at whoever comes out of that A and T Bethune Cookman matchup as the winner. That's the team that I foresee coming out. That's the team that I would predict to win, and I wouldn't even be shocked if a team like Harris Stowe or a Johnson C. Smith, if they do hold on to home, actually upset and beat Texas Southern in that second round. I'm just saying, because that's a yeah, home. Yeah, I definitely think that you're giving the take. When you talk about these teams, they are really, really close, right in that um, same department. When you're talking about Massey rankings, they tell you they're close. You look at offensive stat, they're right there. Uh, both, all three of the teams live in the 70s. Whether it's on the offensive side of the ball, they put right at uh, 72, 74, 76 points a game. On the defensive side, and that's respectively, that's North Carolina A&T, Bethune, Cookman, and Texas Southern in that order. Defensively, 72, 72.2, and 76 uh, uh, defensively for Texas Southern. So, literally, they score right around. You're talking about a 70-point 70, 70 game in these matchups. I just gonna give the edge for Texas Southern Little Tig uh, the Tigers because they've been there before uh, in regards to playing in these tournaments, uh, playing deep in these tournaments in terms of that. So I think their pedigree, coaching wise, I'll give the edge also uh, the Texas Southern University in terms of the experience, uh, or in terms of what you see the coach. North Carolina A and T, you talking the first year at the helm, interim coach. I think he's done everything to earn that job, and I give him a lot of credit for that. But Coaching-wise, I'm going to give the edge to Johnny Jones at Texas Southern University as well. So I think you can argue with either one of these three teams coming out of this region. Uh, but, as you said, I'm going to give the edge for Texas Southern University. In a lot of ways, not so much because I'm a Texas Southern fan or I'm there at Texas Southern. I really want that Final Four matchup between Prairie View and Texas Southern. I okay. think that's going to be incredible. So that's where I'm leaving my edge just a little bit more because what I want to see in that Final Four matchup with Prairie View and Texas Southern playing each other to get to another championship game. They played in the championship game of the SWAC tournament last year. They've had some incredible matchups over the last two years going back and forth in terms of each team winning at home the last two years. Prairie View just finding a way to get more wins in conference play and getting it done, and it set it up beautiful last year for a swag tournament game that everybody was uh, loving to see. It went down to the end of that game, and Prairie View just found a way uh, under the coach, Coach Byron, uh, to get it done in a lot of ways. So I think that's another reason why I see Texas Southern coming out of this region and Prairie View coming out of the other region. What a wonderful Final Four matchup. All right, AD, uh, let's see. So, so uh, Dr. Cavill has, has uh, Texas Southern coming out of this. AD has Bethune-Cookman coming coming out of this i've got north carolina a t coming out of this region so as you can already see this uh yeah. this jerry johnson region is so far the most diverse uh region that we have so far uh we have two more regions to go and again you're watching the bcsn hbcu fantasy keyword fantasy men's basketball tournament we've uh introduced and told you about 16 teams uh, that are in the tournament so far. We'll tell you about the other 16 uh, right after these words. Uh, you're watching the uh, BCSN Sports Wrap on the Black College Sports Network. The Creole seasoning is a sodium-free and sugar-free blend that's versatile enough to put on anything. One of the first blends I developed more than eight years ago, the Creole seasoning has an unmistakable aroma, a bold flavor, and a little heat for character. Every time I open one of these bottles, I hear trumpets and big band music. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Full, but we Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. So we've got a good 
Mangos Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock in downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992 or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Tell your mama hungry, papa hungry, brother hungry. Mangoes Caribbean Restaurant, authentic Caribbean cuisine. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. It's like a loot machine. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Let's face it, shopping for insurance can be time consuming. That's why when it comes to your auto, home, and life insurance needs, make things simple and trust the experts at Allstate. They will help you get the coverage that fits your needs while helping you bundle your life, home, and auto policies. Bundling saves you money, sure, but it also saves you time so you can enjoy the things that matter most even more. Contact me, Tammy Haynes, your local agent, for a free personalized insurance quote. Allstate, are you in good hands? Majesty is a premium health and wellness tea line focused on bringing delicious yet healthy tea blends to the community. Filled with an abundance of vitamins and antioxidants, we work to blend teas with exotic spices and fruits to produce scrumptious and wholesome beverages. So check us out at MyMajesties.com. That's M-Y-M-A-J-E-S-T-E-A-S. Dot com. My Majesties, an Urban Passport member. It's like a loot machine. Going around town, trying to get down. It's like a loot machine. Welcome back to the BCSN Sports Wrap. Brian Fulford, A.D. Drew, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, all here. Uh, and we are talking about the 2020 HBCU Fantasy Men's Basketball Tournament. That's right. Quarantine life has got us putting together the top 32 teams <laughs> in HBCU Men's Basketball and putting them all into four regions and playing in this tournament. That will never happen, not unless, you know, by some miracle means of everybody leaving the NCAA and the NAIA that we all decide to get together and make this thing happen, which you never know, 15, 20 years down the road, this might be something that is actually happening, just saying, could, could, you know, just could happen. Uh, right. you know. Also, in regards to COVID-19, if the NCAA keeps shutting down all the money that they're giving schools, that might change the trajectory as well. And I'll yeah. also say, you know, these athletic directors got a lot of extra time on their hand to do conference calls and Skypes and Zooms and everything else. And <laughs> people going to start putting some ideas together and, you know, they got some time to do some stuff. They also got some time to look at some strategical realignments just of how 
teams are moving around division one division two naia this team going up this team <laughs> going down you know they're talking about uh you know it's always been rumored that fam's coming to the swack and other teams are coming to the swack and this team's coming to the sac and ciaa you got time Come to play with it now Hey, y'all just want that gay, though. They just want that gay because they know fam, you travel as well. That's all they want to say. This, this, this fantasy, this fantasy tournament belongs in an, in some athletic director's emergency break uh, uh, envelope. It's, this should be in somebody's case to say, hey, when things are falling apart, it's like, hey, well, you know what? These guys had this idea of a of a all encompassing HBCU basketball tournament. Uh, or an HBCU league. Maybe we should all be in it. I don't know. But yeah. all it takes uh, one, is one. one. Other, yeah. One other thing, Dr. Kavir, uh yeah. why we got a minute. Tell everybody, you know, people tune in our show. Tell them a little bit about your show. Certainly. This is Dr. Kavir's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. We come on every Tuesday from 6 to 7 Central Standard Time. You can catch me at Facebook Live at Dr. Kenyatta Cavill. That's D R. K E N Y A T T A C A V I L, or you can go to Facebook and go straight to Dr. Ville's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. We give you all the information about HBCU sports, and right now we're transit transitioning where we give you the business side of sports, so you get a little more of the business talk as we have a chance, as we talked about during this COVID 19 uh, pandemic. We'll go into those inner workings about the financial aspects. And what we can expect. So this week you can look for us for surely to talk about this NCA uh, information that just came out. A press release talking about that they were uh, cutting amount of the money that they're giving the schools uh, this year due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And so that will be fascinating to see. We had Dr. Charles McCullen, as you all did as well, and you heard him talk about the fact that he saw it coming in a lot of ways. Um, so it'll be real fascinating to see what these institutions will have to do to try to make up for that financial margin that is likely not going to be there. And then, unfortunately, you get this notion we may be talking about some type of football tournament if we're not careful uh, because there's going to be some real questions as this thing starts to linger along and we start to get more of the updates from the medical field where it looks like People are starting to get some concern about the football season being in jeopardy, at least maybe uh, that first month in September. Yeah, and well, if, uh, if you... Back, but the classic, uh, you know, early season classics, you know, the uh, BX Swag Challenger being with the keynote one in that uh, in that September timeline. But, uh, you know, you start losing things like the Magic City Classic and... Uh, uh, <laughs> Stuff like that, you know, it's 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 going to be uh, interesting around HBCU football. No doubt about it. Yeah, the it'll be interesting, and of course, if you uh, if you if you heed, heed the words of Mark of the commissioner, Doctor McClellan, he said, if you want football in the fall, you need to stay home. So that was his, uh, and, and that message is starting to come out to a lot of people, and a lot of cities are in a lot of cities and states are, are taking extra measures uh to really bring home the message that you got to stay home folks i know it's hard uh but that's just um you know where we at right now and um so it'll be interesting to kind of hear those conversations so we definitely want to encourage you to tune in listen to doc's show um and then you know obviously whenever we get opportunities to to have people on we're, we're talking to different people and then there's times when we like this we're trying to do something fun to brighten up your spirits a little bit uh just to remind you you know you at home the fans are the ones that are deciding which teams advance from the first round to the sweet 16 to the elite eight to the final four and to the championship not us you and it, we're not doing simulated games you know we're not taking twitter polls this is all. You go to the website, and you actually vote. You'll see the matchups. You vote. The teams with the most votes are the teams that advance. So this truly, uh, sadly, these guys aren't getting an opportunity to decide and play on the court. But, but uh, look, it's a fantasy a tournament, and, uh, you know, we, we're, we're sitting here breaking down what 
would be potential matchups if these things happened and so it'll be interesting to kind of see how some of these things play out and we, we hope that uh, not only will you vote for your school but you'll vote for the best matchup you'll vote for the team that you think will win and we'll just kind of play it out and uh, see what happens over the course of the next week and a half all right we've given you two regions thus far in our tournament now we're going to go to the John McClendon region. And these games will be played in Birmingham, Alabama, which is the uh, the home of the SWAC. Um, and where what, what is the location of where the SWAC tournament was going to be held, Dr. Cavill or AD? It was going to uh, be in Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, uh, it used to be called the Fair Park Arena. That's what I know it as. They've changed the name of it. Uh, I do not know what the new technical name is, but it's still the same old, same old arena in uh, uh, in uh, not too far from Miles Campus. It's on the uh, state fairgrounds. And the seating right, they, they moved it this year that they were going to actually play the games over there at the Bartlow Arena for the next two oh, years. They actually oh, got that, paid downtown. to move it. Yes, uh, which is uh, the home basketball oh, arena. UAB. UAB. That's right. UAB Bartlow Arena. And so uh, they were doing some construction stuff and uh, with the State Fair arena there uh, in regards to that. And then there were some, uh, I think, some other teams had got in there and were able to use it. So they had to move for the Bartlow. And basically the city actually paid for it. So it was a pretty good deal for the SWAT. Yeah, and, and uh, par- even though parking is not as good at the Bartow Arena, it's in a it's in a much better part of uh, town. You know, I know they have some construction down there by the BJCC, which is where they host the high school tournament, which is also another uh, great arena. So uh, they they had their, they had a couple of choices in the city of Birmingham. We just know we're not doing it on Miles Campus, though. All right, so let's get into this bracket here in this region. Uh, these eight teams, of course, playing in Birmingham at whatever site we decide or whoever is running this tournament decides to uh, play these games at. Uh, the number one seed in this region, of course, the North Carolina Central Eagles out of the MEAC. Uh, talked about them, the, the uh, I guess you could say the four-time MEAC tournament champions. Um, the number two seed. The Tennessee State Tigers of the Ohio Valley Conference. Uh, Tennessee State uh, with an with an overall record uh, that sits at eighteen and fifteen. Uh, they were actually fifth in the Ohio Valley, tied for fifth in the Ohio Valley. The number three seed. How about that? I tell you something about these three seeds getting some home cooking, man. Miles <laughs> College. <laughs> And these guys, who these organizers, man, if anybody's going to be upset, I'll tell you what, it's the number one seeds in a couple of these places. Miles College uh, with a 20, I believe, 21-4 and four, uh, from out of the SIAC back-to-back uh, uh, regular 20, season. 27-4 overall, 24-4 regular season. Okay, thank you. Uh, back-to-back regular season champions, back-to-back tournament champions. Miles College comes in at the three C noticeable home uh, court, uh, home territory advantage. And then the four seed, how about this? Uh, Xavier uh, Gold Rush uh, from out of New Orleans. They'll come up to Birmingham. They were the number one uh, ranked team uh, in the regular season of the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference. Uh, won the regular season, won the tournament, and actually, I believe, are tenth ranked in NAIA. If and I'm not the, mistaken, and they're the highest rated uh, NAIA HBCU. Correct. Okay, so those are the top four seeds, and so Xavier will take on uh, the SWAC's Alcorn State Braves in the number five spot. There, Alcorn State uh, representing. The SWAC, uh, Alcorn, had an overall record of 15-15. and 15. They were sort of right there in a three-way tie with um, a couple other schools, Jackson State and Grambling, and they were the fifth seed. They are the fifth SWAC team to get into our tournament. Uh, the number six seed, how about this, the Stillman Tigers. Uh, Stillman comes in. An interesting matchup they'll get. Uh, Stillman versus Miles. Uh, Stillman had a overall record of 20 and 10 and uh, 11 and 7 they finished third in their conference in the regular season 
Uh, the number seven seed, the Albany State Golden Rams, they will take on Tennessee State there. Um, Albany State out of the SIC with a 17-14 and 14 record. Uh, Albany State was tied for second in the East Division. Or excuse me, not tied for second, but they were second in the East Division. Uh, just finished one game behind Clark in that division. And then the number eight seed, the Morehouse uh, Maroon Tigers, uh, Morehouse out of the out of the SIAC. And so I believe, if I do the math correctly, we've got uh, um, let's see, we got a couple of SIA schools. This is probably the most diverse group. Actually, we've got three SIA schools. If I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, three SIAC. Schools. Yeah, three SIA schools in in this uh, in this region. Uh, one SWAC, one MEAC, one Ohio Valley, and then um, a couple of NAIA schools. Uh, so as we go through this and you look at the matchups, uh, AD, we'll start with you. Uh, tell us first round how you see this playing out, and maybe your upset and who you see winning. Well, you know, I like to look at geography when we're putting this imaginary tournament together. So, Miles sleeps in their own bed, playing in their own city. Still, man, 45 minutes down the road, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. That used to be a classic matchup in the SIAC before it still been dropped down to NAIA. You're talking about... Uh, a jam-packed place. Miles plays most of his games at home. There were two games Miles had to move to Fair Park Arena, which is uh, state the State Fair Arena at uh, State Fairgrounds, which is about five miles from uh, Miles' campus. The two games were Tuskegee and Steel because because the the overflow that you just could not get anybody enough people in their state. That would be a great matchup once again to see those two play because I don't think they have played since Stillman has left the uh, SIAC. Don't quote me on that. I'm just going off the top of my head when I say that. Tennessee State straight down I-65 about three hours from uh, Nashville to Birmingham. That would be a, a great uh, home court advantage to them. Also, Morehouse coming two hours west down I-20 to Birmingham. This would be a great venue in Birmingham for all these uh for all these games play. But now who do I who do I predict to win? Coming out of the bottom half of that bracket, uh I, I see Miles coming out of the bottom half of that bracket. They they would beat uh Steel like They beat they beat Tennessee, they beat Tennessee State in the uh in the semifinals, uh coming out the bottom half of the bracket. In the in the top half of the bracket, you know they they always say a sixteen has never been the one up until uh, two years ago when Virginia beat uh, when Virginia lost. Who did they lose to? UMBC. Uh, yes, UM, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. So I see an eight beating one in our tournament. No, you oh. don't. No, you yes, don't. Yes, it. yes, stop it. Stop. Hey, go ahead. hey, I go get, ahead. To, I get to click. You know, on my on my bracket <laughs> at BCSN Drew at BCSN Drew is where you can hashtag get after Drew for what he's about to say. Go ahead, Drew. Okay, I, I want you to think of this. I'm a fan of you, Greg. I'm a fan of you, Greg, and, 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 right. and, and I'm giving Bethune their profit, and I got Bethune on the upset. I'm also a Tuskegee grad, and I'm fist to pick up, I'm in, and I'm fist to pick Morehouse in the upset. What's going on? They, they're probably going to revoke my degree for both of those picks, both my degrees for both of those picks, but I'm going with my gut feeling. Morehouse, Xavier. Uh, now, Bullhouse got they had their fun, but it won't be it won't be for too long. I've got Xavier and Miles in the conference finals. I'm gonna let Dr. Cavill talk first before I tell you who's gonna win that. Can I can I jump in and apologize to uh, Jabril Blunt, uh, Coach Moten? Apologize to the folks over in North Carolina Central for AD's comments. Again, AD can be reached at BCS Andrew. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Cavill. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad that you said that. 
Don't worry about me. I don't want any of that. I don't want that smoke, right? I did get calls and thoughts about Miles in that Tennessee State matchup, but I'll talk about that a little more. Let me get these teams out of the first round, and let me start with Tennessee State and work myself up to North Carolina since I don't know if I have a much uh, big upset coming out of this region. So let me look at number two, Tennessee State Tigers. As we know, they play in Ohio Valley. They had uh, one of their best seasons in terms of wins and what they did at home. Uh, they're not at home in this uh, this tournament. And they just finished at 900. So there are some questions you would have at time that, uh, that may would give you pause. So when you talk about Tennessee State Tigers, uh, offensively they put up 71.4%, and defensively they give up 71 And they did have a lot of close games in terms of the OVT play, in which figures out why they probably finished right at 500. Uh, Albany State, out of the SIEC, defensively, they will lock you down at 66 points. Uh, and offensively, they, they can give you some points up there at 68, 69 points, seven, almost 70 points a game. But I think Tennessee State has just too much in terms of limp, athleticism, and the way they play. They like to post you up. They play a really uh, good basketball in terms of being able to get into the post. And they like to drill and, and, and get some low post game, which you don't necessarily see a lot uh, in the game today, particularly at the college level. That matchup between Stillman and Miles, I love what AD said about uh, that matchup in regards to it being an old matchup between the SIAC. Uh, these teams do not like each other in terms of the institutional athletics. So this is a great chance for these two teams to lock back up because they haven't done it in a while. But I see Miles coming out of that matchup. With the Alcorn State Braves and Xavier, this is my upset pick. I have Xavier getting it done against Alcorn State. Alcorn State, as we know now, has made a change. You can kind of see that taking place as they lost big. Jackson State in the quarterfinals. And so it's gonna, it would have been hard for them to rebound after such a tough loss, even though you would think they would be about excited about coming in this tournament. I'm not so more so so involved in thinking about this because I think in a lot of ways uh, that the Braves were really concerned about whether their coach were coming back. So I think uh, they would play hard, but I think it was just too much for them to overcome. And with that, I see a a Xavier with the way they play defense, just giving up under 68 points a game, able to put up some points of 78. This is a very solid team. And Alcorn, uh, the Braves defensively, just 73 points, 75 points offensively. I see the Xavier with that upset there. North Carolina Central, I don't have to see them having a problem with Morehouse. I know Morehouse uh, defensively, um, there they play some really good ball defensively, just giving under 70 points a game, 69.6 to be exact. Offensively, though, they can't score. They only they, they don't even average 70 points a game. Uh, you say that with North Carolina Central, at them being at 60, 69.7 offense for MEAC, but defensively, they're second in the defense in the MEAC giving up 66 points a game, and that's the side where they play on. So this will be a slog fest in terms of this matchup, but I do find a way that the Eagles come out of this matchup. To let you know how that upset will really hurt me is I see North Carolina Central getting it done against Xavier and then finding a way to get it done, get, uh, done in the Elite Eight, if you would, against Tennessee State. So I see North Carolina Central as the number one seed coming out of this. The second number one seed overall we had, I thought they would just run through this John McClendon region and bracket that we have here. So I'm really intrigued about the upset uh, that we just talked about moments ago. I'm like, ooh, ooh nice. I, uh, I, I find it interesting that, and I, I didn't think about this until AD mentioned this about the distance and the traveling. So many of the teams that, you know, you mentioned between Xavier, Miles, Stillman, um, well, I don't know about Xavier. Um, I don't know how far a drive is it from um, New Orleans. To... Yeah. Okay, so maybe not Xavier, but at least Stillman, uh, at least Stillman, Miles, Tennessee, Morehouse. You mentioned they're within a three to four hour proximity of Birmingham, whereas North Carolina Central, who's the number one seed, the second number one seed is coming from how far away in this contest they're coming from quite a ways so about eight hours (laughs) yeah the furthest probably of anybody in this so the the tournament committee did a did a poor job 
job of placing them in this in this region of where they are. I, I think they must have been looking at like the name or something and saw John McClendon <laughs> there and said and said, "Hey, we'll put North Carolina Central there." So the tournament <laughs> committee. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> they, they stuck, uh, you know, but. You know, here's a team north. I'm sure there's some people from North Carolina Central thinking we should have been in Charlotte. How the hell did we end up in Birmingham? <laughs> I agree with you. I totally agree with you, people. I don't, the committee, blame the committee. But, <laughs> but seriously, I think uh, North Carolina Central. I, I I would love to see a North Carolina Central Miles matchup. I think that'd be a heck of a matchup. I think a lot of people sleep because, in my opinion. I think Miles is possibly worthy of being a number one seed, but you know, obviously, because of ratings, being in Division Two, blah blah blah, uh, they 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 didn't quite make it there as a one. I think they're as good of a three seed, might even be as good as any two seed uh, in this tournament. And, and I think if if these games were being scheduled on TV, I think the Stillman Miles game would be that primetime matchup that would be like the last game or maybe maybe you make this like the 7 o'clock game, you know, the game where you want to get everybody in to see you want to have a packed house for that session. That's the game that you make sort of the feature game of the night because, uh, A.D., you broke that game down real well um, in terms of uh, the history between those two teams. So I'm going Miles and Central in that bracket, and I'll tell you what, I, I will go for – uh, AD is calling for an upset early, and that's the only reason I won't pick Central, but I would not be surprised if Miles, as the three, ends up winning that region. But I, I've seen North Carolina Central enough to know, I believe in Jabri, uh, Jabril Cart, uh, Blunt, excuse me, uh, uh, and uh, he, he's the truth. And I'm telling you, that's why he's the MEAC Player of the Year. And, um, yeah, so I, I'm telling you, that's why I'm going with Central. So, uh, AD, did you who, who did you pick? I, I lost. I heard I lost everything else you said after you picked Morehouse to win. <laughs> who who comes out of that bracket? Who comes out of that region okay. for you? Uh, just, just a recap. I've got Xavier and Miles in the uh, conference championship. Excuse me, in the in the John McClendon Regional Championship game. Xavier, Xavier's lack of size finally catches up with them. I've got Miles coming out of that beach. Okay, that's that's good. That's a good. Uh, be interesting to see how that one goes. So, uh, folks, uh, folks out there, of course, you you want to you, you have your thoughts and comments. You get a chance to to vote on these teams in the first round, and then as we get into the uh, Sweet Sixteen and Elite Eight, your votes your votes matter. Okay, in in deciding which teams advance. Again, this is a fantasy basketball tournament. These teams will not get a chance to play. Unfortunately, they will not be coming to these cities and locations that we have that they have been spotted to play in. Although we sure wish that they could play and would be playing. So, All right, yeah, let's get it out for Tennessee State because Carlos Marshall Jr. is going to have a little something to say about Miles coming out of there, out of Tennessee State second team uh, All OVC. Good. Uh, that's a good matchup, by the way. Let, let's let's just put. Let's be real. If Miles were to somehow win this, think about the road that they would have to travel. I mean, they'd have to travel through Stillman, possibly Tennessee State, and then probably North Carolina, North Carolina Central. I mean, that, or that's Xavier. Either way, you, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That that's I'll about as it. tough of a road. They certainly deserve it. <laughs> yeah, we this, this so far. I'll tell you what, that McClendon bracket might be the toughest bracket that I've seen so far. I mean, we got one more to go here, but I think so far that might be the toughest bracket. Uh, so let's get into this last one, the Ben Job region, and our number one overall seed in this uh, region is Southern, the Southern Jaguars of the SWAC. And all of these games are being played in Washington, D.C., most likely on the campus of Howard University. If Howard were able to to host this, Howard has a nice stadium, nice basketball arena. I like the fact that they have the raised floor, or not the raised floor, but the raised seating that kind of sits about uh, maybe about six feet up over the court. Um, I think uh, when you get maybe about 2,000, two to 3,000 in that, in that stadium, uh, I think it's a great setting um, for for basketball. So, um, 
that that's a good location, Washington D.C. in the Northeast, and so number one seed Southern having to travel all the way from Baton Rouge to to be in this region. But again, the that's tournament the longest trip for a number one seed. That's the longest trip. Yeah, again, the tournament organizers must have saw Ben Job and thought, "Hey, let's stick Southern in this region because <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll know what these organizers were thinking." Man, I tell you, these guys. Um, okay, so the number. But I tell you, I tell you who who is sort of sitting on a home court advantage, maybe a little bit, is number two seed Hampton, the Hampton Pirates, uh, playing not far. Hampton, of course, is not far away from D.C. I'm sure they've got a lot of alums in that uh, Washington DMV area, and so the Pirates uh, coming to this contest. Now the Pirates may have a record that sits at 15 and 19, but they are one of the highest rated, one of the higher rated teams. Uh, according to the Massey ratings. And so um, they were in the conference finals of the Big South, and uh, so we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about Hampton a little bit later. Uh, the number three seed in this bracket, the CIAA Conference Tournament Champions, Winston-Salem State Rams, uh, having to travel up the road, up 95 from Winston-Salem up to D.C., uh, that'll be a, a good crowd for them. And then how about another Virginia area squad? How about Virginia Union um, coming up the road to, uh, to, to play? And they are the four seed in this region. Number five seed. I mean, doesn't get any better than uh, Morgan State from Baltimore having to play right down the road uh, in this contest against Virginia Union. Morgan State was one of the only Division One HBCU teams that had a 500 record on the road. Uh, and that's important to note because, of course, we know many of the D1 uh, teams travel and they play these Power 5 schedules and, you know, not very many of them have success playing the Power 5 teams or a lot of the uh, high mid-major uh, PWCs, but Morgan State with a record of seven seven, pretty doggone impressive to see uh, that from them for their road record. Number six, how about this? The Tougaloo Bulldogs, uh, number six seed. That is a heck of a matchup right there. Number six Tougaloo versus Winston Salem State. Uh, Tougaloo <clears throat> uh, finished second in the regular season of the GCAC. Uh, second in the uh, lost in the conference finals and a great game against Xavier. Uh, that is a good Tougaloo squad, by the way. And number seven, AD's Tuskegee Golden uh, Golden Tigers uh, playing uh, in representing the SIAC. Uh, Tuskegee finished with a record of 18 and 10. And they finished second in the Western Division of the SIC, right there behind Miles. Uh, AD, that, 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 nah, I won't say it. Um, and then I was, I was, I was going to make a bad joke, but I'm going to leave it alone. Number eight, <laughs> <laughs> the number eight seed. I don't want to get Tuskegee Nation upset at me. Uh, number eight, Central State. Uh, the Marauders are the uh, from out of Ohio. Uh, Wilberforce, Ohio, taking on Southern in that region. So there's our there's our eight teams. Uh, it seems like we have a a, a heavy. Well, no, it's a, it's a good mix. We got a couple of CIAA's, a couple of SIACs, Big South, um, GCAC. It's a, it's a nice little mix in this region. Doctor Caville, we'll start with you in this region. What are your thoughts? Opening round. Uh, where you see the upset happening and who you have coming out. Well, this is my bracket that really blows up in a lot of ways. So let me start with that. And, and people like you too surprised. We'll see how it goes towards the end of the bracket. But I will tell you early that it goes down. Let me just start <laughs> it out. Hampton and Tuskegee on the football field in a lot of ways. You know, there's a big matchup between the institutions, obviously, uh, with uh, – uh, Booker T. Washington, the founder of Tuskegee University, being school at Hampton. So there's a lot of synergy in a lot of ways between these two schools. Hampton uh, defensively giving up 79.2. And that's in the conference of the Big South that's not very strong. Offensively, they were able to put up 
uh, points a game. Tuskegee defensively uh, shuts teams down, 68.7 points offensively. They're able to put up 73 points a game or 72.6 to be exact. I see this as the upset. I see Tuskegee finding a way to get it done against Hampton. Wow. Okay. Tuskegee sneaking out of into the Sweet 16, and they will face another team that makes it out in an upset. Tougaloo, the Bulldogs, get it done against Winston-Salem State. This is a team that did get hot in the CIAA tournament, uh, but kind of struggled all season long. I, uh, tr- points that you want to talk about once from Salem State, they were the number one defensive team in the CIAA, uh, just giving up 64.2 uh, uh, points for the game. But on offense, they struggled uh, as they did get hot in the CIAA tournament to cut down the nets, uh, just uh, scoring around 69 points a game. But Tougaloo, they like to get up and down the floor. Uh, similar to what we said, a, a lot of those teams out of the Gold Coast Athletic Conference, they can score. Um, they were the number two team in the Gold Coast Athletic Conference, GCAC, uh, putting up 84.4 points a game defensively. They shut some teams down, 74.3 tens of the game. So they had some defensive margin where they uh, scored some teams. Defensively, they were number two in the Gold Coast Athletic Conference. So they are able to get a lot of things. So I see a 6-7 matchup in the Sweet 16 with Tougaloo coming out of this game in Washington, D.C. Uh, to the 4-5 matchup, I see Morgan State upsetting Virginia Union, if you want to call it a 5-4 matchup. You see that I see a couple of fives beating out four teams uh, in this tournament. It's, it's kind of like that 5-12 uh, matchup we see in the uh, bigger tournament, if you would. Morgan State offensively 70. Point four points of game defensively seventy point nine. You talked about what they did uh, in non conference play in terms of being right at the five hundred mark. Uh, but I think Virginia Union gets it done. Number two team scoring out of the CIAA seventy six point eight points of game defensively. Uh, Virginia can get with you seventy two point seven points of game. But I see Morgan State the Bears getting the upset if you would in that matchup, bringing us to number one. The number one seed, I don't see them having a problem. This is one of the hottest teams we talked about uh, in uh, black college basketball, really ca- college basketball, winning eight straight games. But before that, they did go on a two-game slide, but they picked up six games. So they've won, if you would, 14 of their last 16 games. Mm-hmm. They did struggle coming out of the box with the swag, but they were playing the toughest teams in the conference. That really came into the season playing well when they took their road trip, losing to, uh, if you would, uh, Prairie View, Texas, on that Texas uh, road trip was very hard. And then they played their rival game in Grambling. One of the teams that were picked to play really well in the SWAC, they kind of slid near the end and couldn't even find a way in this tournament, if you would. Um, but uh, Grambling started out pretty well. This is a team that can play some ball. So they took three straight losses, but they put it together. So I think Southern is a really good team. Number one defensive team in the SWAC, 66.7 points a game. So they can lock you down and shut you down. Offensively, um, when they get it going, they can play, but they do go on some lulls. But I think they have enough to get out of that game against Central State, who has the number one defensive team in uh, number one offensive team, I should say, at 70.9% per game. So it's interesting when you talk about that defense-offense matchup. I think it's fascinating what we were able to do in terms of this one versus eight because you do have styles of play, but I think Southern will find a way to get it done defensively. And as you move through the bracket, I'll finish that up with Southern defeating Morgan State that won over five. So I think Southern continues to make it to the Elite Eight. Uh, we talked about that upset matchup. Somebody's Cinderella shoe is going to stay on. And in this case, I have Tougaloo getting it done against Tuskegee um, at the number six seed. But then I think the, the shoe falls off of the Cinderella team. And I have Southern finding a way to get it done. So three of uh, the four teams going into Atlanta for me are coming out of SWAC. Surprise me, but just the way I see uh, with the matchup coming in, uh, with the biggest surprise is that number two seed out of Texas Southern find a way. The rest of them, I have a chalk. I have the number one seeds basically coming out uh, into Atlanta. So I finish it off here in the big Joe Reese with Southern honoring their coach, Ben Joe, coming out of that region and getting it done. All right, real interesting there. And so, AD, how about you? Actually, I'm almost speechless because uh, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Cavill had 
brought up a lot of the things that I was going to bring up. He pretty much picked the same exact bracket that I picked. I am. Uh, and so we didn't go. look at each other's seat. This and we did not look at each other's seat. <laughs> I've, I've got Southern over, uh, over Central State. I've got Morgan State or Virginia State. I've got Tougaloo with an asterisk. The, uh, the Travion Porter did not play in the GCAC tournament. That's my asterisk. If he plays, Tougaloo beats Winston Salem State. And let's get real. I'm a homer with this pick right here. Tuskegee over Hampton. I'm 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 being a straight home with that pick. <laughs> I, I'm not even I'm not even gonna shoot the coat down. Uh uh but uh Tuskegee gets the first round win. Two two blue in my opinion. I've seen both of them play. I think two blues uh would would beat Tuskegee head to head in a uh in a matchup on the court. So I haven't seen both teams play this year. Uh so you've got Southern and Two Blue in the finals. Now, I am going to say this. This is the best chance for an NAIA team to get to uh, the Final Four. That that two blue team is very, very good. Southern, know what Southern does on their own court. If Southern slips up and lets Tougaloo stay in the game, Tougaloo would beat Southern. But I don't think Southern is gonna is, is gonna let that happen. But this this would be the one the the best chance for AI eighteen to get to the final four. But I do have Southern going. And refresh my memory. Who did you who did you say at the beginning? Who uh, the asterisk for Tougaloo was AD? Was it a, a Travia Porter who did play in the tournament? Uh no, yeah. I think that's what he's. It was his asterisk was saying. Uh, if it was going to change in terms of Winston Salem, is because of who didn't play in that matchup, and I agree with that. Right, Tugalo, what, uh, who, was, who was the kid who didn't play for uh, Tugalo? I think you're talking about um... the Brock Carter. What is he, Brock Carter? They had oh, a player no, who no, was no, out no. to the GCAC tournament. Yeah, um, I can't Sterling. I think his name was uh, Sterling, or uh, I can't think. I'm shamefully, I can't think of his name. We did a couple of those games. Um, uh, he's he's a six Strip, eight. The, the Michael Stribling. The Michael Stribling, yeah, six that's six what, eight. That's what I bit to say. Yeah, six eight. He's a he's a, he's a difference maker. I think he, him he, not. He, yeah, he, no, no. Yeah, he, he's he's, he's he's legitimate, and I think now, I, like I said, we didn't get any reports as to what was going on with him, and yeah, if he is playing, if well, you know, if he were playing, let's just say, you know, and he, if he wasn't injured uh, and eligible. Uh, let's just say if in the NAIA tournament, if you were playing in the NAIA tournament, I agree with you guys. I think Tougaloo would be a tough match for Winston-Salem. But, look, Winston-Salem, they were a favorite by a lot of people to win the CIAA. Um, they got a lot of talent on that squad. I know it was a close matchup against Fayetteville State. I know it came down to free throws. Uh, Robert Cologne is a, is a heck of a guard. I'm actually... You know, I know you guys are kind of rooting for the six sevens. I actually would like to see Cologne of Winston Salem going up against Hampton's two ah! scores. Yep. You know, Hampton. I mean, you guys. I, you look, Hampton is one of the only schools in Division One basketball with two players in the top two. Oh, yeah, yeah, with the top two scoring averages, and I'm talking about senior Jermaine Morrow who's averaging 24.8 points per game, and sophomore Ben Stanley, who averaged 22. No other school in Division One had two guys in the top ten in scoring. And they also had two guys, those two, in free throw attempts. So those two guys score and they get to the line. And I'm telling you, that Hampton squad, I think, just kind of ran out of gas in the second half of that, G of that uh, what, the Big South tournament? Big South. tournament yeah. yeah, that, that so... As much as I like how attractive that Tougaloo Winston Salem is and the potential upset there, I'm actually rooting to kind of see a, a Winston Salem Hampton matchup. I think, I mean, old CIAA uh, rivals, I'm sure uh, that, that that would be a real exciting matchup just because of the guards uh, in that contest. I do agree with you guys about Morgan State. I think Morgan State, um, by their medal of 
you know what they've shown me on the road, what they've shown on the road this year. I th- and, and I think you know, look, they're playing in D.C. I mean, that's not far at all. So I think they've got a sort of a pseudo home advantage. And I look, Southern is the surprise of the tournament. Southern is the surprise of the season. Uh, I think because I don't think very many people predicted Southern to do what they did, um, and that's the hot team. So I, I think Southern would advance all the way to the regional finals. And I would probably, if I had to go between Hampton and Winston Salem, I would probably go. I would probably go. Oh, it's a tough one there. I'd probably go Hampton. I mean. Two elite scores versus one elite score. I mean, I, I think that would be a heck of a a heck of a showdown, and um, you know, I, I think uh, that's a tough call for me right there. I, I I'd probably I'd probably root for or probably you know pick a Hampton to come out of that uh, region. Although I, I think uh, Hampton versus Southern would be a good matchup. So um, I, I just you know I'm shocked. I think is there if there is an upset, I'm riding with you guys about the Tougaloo over Winston Salem, the six over the three. I think that's the that's the circled matchup. I, I'd be floored, you know, Tuskegee. I know you guys are. I know you AD especially. You're vote. You're you're looking with your heart there. I, I know. I know you'll be clicking every day on Tuskegee in that matchup. I got um, two votes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well said. You got two votes, and you know I don't know. Yeah. So I don't know about I don't know about anybody else, but I know they're gonna get two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well said. Well said. So, all right. So then that brings us. If you if you take a look at the overall bracket, there you see how it all uh, stacks up. And so, again, if you can recall, who are your, who who's your final four, uh, Dr. Creville, Kenyatta? Yes, I certainly, coming out of the Clarence Big House Games region, I have Prairie View. Uh, coming out of the Jerry's John, Johnson region, excuse me, I have Texas Southern University. So I have a number one seed coming out uh, uh, on one side, uh, featuring a uh, number two, but it's all Texas matchup uh, in this final four. Uh, with a one versus a two. And then on the other side of the bracket, I have North Carolina Central coming out of the John Clinton region uh, versus another number one seed, Southern, coming out of the Ben Joe region. AD, who's your final four? You know, that's an educator over there because he's got all chalk on his face. I know, I know, I know. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I do have uh, in in the Big House Games region, I've got uh, Prairie View. And the Ben Johnson, excuse me, Jerry Johnson. Johnson. Come on now, guys. Jerry I'm, Johnson. I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking track. In the Jerry Johnson yeah, region. He's thinking I've track. Texas You're Southern. thinking ice cream. Go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> I've got the Southern. In the John McClendon uh, region, I've got Miles. And in Ben Joe region, I've got Southern. Oh, you actually going with Southern too, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I said. That would be the best opportunity for an NAIA team to get out. But if I had uh, if I had some entertainment purposes to put down on this, I would put it on Southern. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and so, you know, if I had to, if I had, if I had to uh, look at mine, there, I'm going, um, I'm going Prairie View A and M. North Carolina A and T, uh, that matchup there, and uh, in the uh, games, and then in the games and Johnson regions, in the McClendon region, I'm going North Carolina Central, and then I'd go Hampton out of the Job region. So okay. two ones and two twos. Well, uh, that's two educators here. Uh, both of you guys are the teacher field. All the chalk on you guys' hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you know what? You know what they say. I mean, most of the time in these in these tournaments, it usually goes, you know, chalk. I mean, you know, you can vote on the, you can pick these upsets if you want, you know, but you end up losing out on uh, bracket bracket challenges when you do that. So, I'm just saying, you know, there's a reason why these teams are one and two. Again, yeah, <laughs> in the fantasy world, uh, this is so. There's a reason why they're ones and twos. Um, yeah. All right, so fellas, let's uh, 
let's break it down. Well, let's save this. Let's save. Let's let's not reveal now a champion. Uh, let's kind of see next week if any of our teams, our four teams, actually advance through the voting. And then uh, we can, you know, hold on to who you, you know, would have voted for. Um, and because obviously we'll see whether that happens. But uh, just a reminder for all of you, uh, you can go to uh, mybcsn.net slash sports wrap. And that's where you can, you can vote. Every day you can go to vote. We'll be sending out reminders via Twitter, uh, Facebook, and on Instagram at mybcsn1. Uh, we'll even be doing some, you know, we'll be doing some Twitter polls throughout the course of the day just to kind of see who you would vote for and then kind of send you some links so that you can actually vote. And again, the fan voting is determining who advances. Okay, no simulations, you know, no dartboard throwing, no, you know, no unbiased... <laughs> No unbiased love for our alma maters or the schools that we work for or did work for and all that other stuff. This is just you. You, the fans, get to decide which teams advance in this fantasy world and this matchup of 32 HBCU teams coming together. So in theory, in theory, it could come down to an alumni base or a uh, sport true. following. Exactly. It could come down to alumni base or, you know, a sports team following. So uh, hopefully we will see some teams, some players, uh, you know, retweeting and, and sending people out to this, um, you know, and, and we'll kind of see what happens. But while we're all stuck in the house, you know, watching old replays of games and, and you know, doing all these things to try to, you know, we, we know we're in this uh, these these different times, and we're all on quarantine, and we're, some of us are still having to work from home. Uh, but th this hopefully is a nice little distraction, create a little bit of debate, uh, get on your favorite message boards, and kind of, you know, chat it out amongst yourselves. Make sure to refer people, mybcsn.net slash sports wrap. And again, that's where you'll be able to find the link to to uh to play uh our instagram twitter and you can find us on facebook at my bcsn1 and so uh let me make sure yes and we'll post all the brackets online so i just got to make sure i get my final note from the producer all right uh dr Cavill, i'll give you a, a a final thought and then ad i'll give you a final thought and then we'll kind of wrap it up so uh dr Cavill, any last words from you no, I really had a fun uh, and just want to thank you for giving me a chance to get in here. Tell folks to check me out, Dr. Deville's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab, every Tuesday from 6 to 7. Uh, you can follow it on uh, Facebook Live, Dr. Deville's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Uh, you can uh, check it out on my Facebook, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, uh, as well as uh, catch us uh, in the studio around this region. That's 1230 a.m. Again, that's 6 to 7 uh, Central Standard Time, uh, and you can catch catch me on my social media platforms at Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, D R K E N Y A T T A C A V I L. That's D R K E N Y A T T A C A V I L. Uh, in terms of finding out and getting that information and getting it to you live, and we'll give you those information on HBCU Sports. But with this, I really had some fun with this. Um, it was a labor of love when you really go to the statistics that have fun and you don't get a chance uh, to really create the matchups because of the difference in the divisional alignments and you don't really see these games very often. So get a chance to just play it out fantasy-wise and talk about it. I think it was a great platform and something uh, great that we brought to the people. So uh, really excited about that in terms of what that really means and, and what we could do uh, moving forward uh, with that. Well, yeah, no, we uh, we definitely uh, uh, appreciate you, appreciate your time and input. I, I can't imagine what the real, you know, these real committees and the time that they spend in going over all of the various metrics that they look at teams on. It is uh, uh, this this was not done in one evening, folks. I'll let you know this was this was a, a couple of a, at least a two or three day process. And can you imagine trying to? see 64 teams out of 
what exactly. 300, 300 some odd years. schools yeah so it's uh definitely uh a uh, major undertaking and, and they and that's everybody in one classification that's not trying to look at three different classifications so <laughs> right. yeah appreciate you uh ad your your final thoughts your words uh and i'm pretty sure dr cavill is going to have uh have my link up on his uh all his social media platforms also no so uh, yes. so that his uh followers can help vote and uh you know we always cross promoting each other uh brian i did the final breakdown of the conferences we've got okay. five we got five SWAC teams, five BAC teams, two D1 independent teams, uh, that being Hampton and Tennessee State, six SIEC teams, six CIAA teams, one Division II independent team, that being uh, West Virginia State, four GCAC teams, uh, three independent NAIA teams, that being uh, Steelman, Harris Hope, on the Division One level, Voorhees on the Division Two level. Uh, we've only got one first round matchup of head to head, uh, with two teams out of the same conference are matched up head to head, and that was uh, Bowie and Bowie State and somebody, and right? And Virginia State. Virginia State, Bowie State, Virginia yeah. State. But we had one conference out of all the HBCU represented conferences that was left out of the tournament. And that was the Red River Conference in the NAIA. The Red River has about five HBCUs in yeah. there. But they were and, there. Yeah, not, none of my HBCUs uh, were able, quite able to make the most of it. Since we don't worry about automatic bids, they got to try harder to get here. <laughs> <laughs> well well said you know plus 500 plus 500 all right so uh that that's the this one and and look you think you think we had a we think we had a great time or you think we just we didn't have enough time or we uh, how do i want to say this you you think it was just this tournament that we had time to work on no 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 we've also been working on a women's fantasy bracket as well so we will be releasing our uh women's uh or the the women's hbcu fantasy women's basketball tournament bracket in the next day or two and so that'll be running out kind of in conjunction with the men uh while it's going on out there so we'll we'll group the the top 32 women's teams and we'll let the ladies kind of duke it out and we'll kind of see what those fan bases look like as well and but keep, we'll keep give your them social distancing while you're fighting no. I'm sorry say that again keep, keep your social distancing while you're fighting yeah yeah <laughs> and wash, exactly and, and wash your hands before you tweet hey, there you go well said AD alright so again uh, appreciate you Dr. Cavill AD appreciate you all your guys effort uh, gotta give another shout out to our producer uh, Roy uh, always grinding away helping to to uh, put all this, uh, help us get this stuff out here and in front of you. And you, the fans, deciding who advances. We hope that you have some fun in doing this. We hope that you, uh, you know, take forth in the banter back and forth. Remember, fantasy. This is fantasy. <laughs> Don't get caught up in conversations with people who want to make this real. All right? Anybody who wants to make any blog sites that want to make this real and get personal you know what just ignore just them mute them. them yeah it's like look bro we don't have time for all that we in quarantine life we gotta have some fun <laughs> you know we don't have time for you hating on us because we went to wherever all right just relax just have some fun enjoy it and uh you know congrats to all 32 teams who made it in and like ad said if you didn't make it in this year hopefully there's 2021 or another fantasy bracket, or maybe you'll just be actually playing real games on the court. Let's hope. Uh, let's hope. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And get out there and vote. Share the word. And uh, we'll see you back probably next week, and we'll kind of look back at the past week. Uh, stay tuned in at MyBCSN1, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, MyBCSN.net slash sports wrap sports rap that's where you can find w-r-a-p 
Yes, W-R-A-P, that's where you can find it. All right, guys, that's it uh, for Dr. Cavill, A.D. Drew, Brian Fulford is me, producer Roy Evans, we are out. Peace out. Uh-huh. It's like a loop machine. All around town, trying to get it down. It's like a loop machine. But you're my beast, they are hard.